Advanced Overdose Prevention Resuscitation. Full PPE is strongly recommended for all trained support workers. PPE must include hand sanitizer, gloves, gown, fitted N95 mask, and protective eyewear. First, check the scene for danger and any opioid-related clues. Check for responsiveness. Try to wake the person up. Open the airway and check for breathing and circulation, pulse, for no more than 10 seconds. If you are an advanced responder, but not part of the EMS system, have someone call 911 and get an AED if available. If the person is not breathing, but you are 100% certain that they have signs of blood circulating, such as a pulse, start assisted breathing. Give one ventilation every five seconds for approximately one minute before rechecking signs of circulation. Continue assisted breathing for approximately one minute. Recheck pulse and signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. If there is no signs of circulation or you are unsure, start CPR. Continue 30 compressions and two ventilations, 30 to two. Use an AED as soon as possible. Bare chest. Attach electrodes. Provide airway management. Provide oxygen therapy. When does uh, naloxone come into play, uh, whether it's nasal or injection, during an advanced overdose prevention resuscitation technique? Uh, the big emphasis is on, number one, is immediate care. Uh, although naloxone is, is proven to be effective, um, it's important that we start the resuscitative efforts as soon as possible. We don't delay those and then administer the naloxone whenever practical. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the bottom of the person's nose. Press the plunger firmly to give the entire dose of naloxone nasal spray. Can you walk us through how to use an injectable naloxone? Absolutely. Okay. okay. So you do is you want to make sure you get your syringe out of the package and ready to be ready for use. Okay. Next, you're going to get your vial of naloxone, and you just want to spin it around a little. Sometimes you can see people get a little tap is to get the uh, the fluid out from the cap. Okay. And then you're going to use this cap breaker, which you just put on, and then you just snap it right off. It just safely breaks the cap off. Remember, this is a sharp hazard, so this will eliminate the chance of uh, getting cut. Okay. Next, you'll take out the syringe. Carefully insert it in the vial, okay. 
and then you're going to pull back on the plunger mm -hmm. and extract all the, the naloxone out of the vial. And that usually is a good sign. You've... Next. The bubbles are a good sign? Bubbles is usually indicate you're near the end. Okay. And try to squeeze out most of the air, but don't worry about if there's a few bubbles in there. Wipe the area with an alcohol prep. Okay. And then you want to inject it in a large muscle, so we can either do the upper the arm here, the pectoral, okay. we can do the thigh. Okay. And then you just go straight into the muscle and then slowly just inject it inside. Thank you so much. Safety put the cap on. And then finally, put it in the sharps container. Okay. Just remember, it's very important before you um, use a, a needle or syringe that if this is a sharps hazard, so you alert everyone around you uh, that you are about to inject. If they are doing compressions, they should stop for that moment until you safely inject the person. And then resuscitation efforts can continue once the needle has been secured into the uh, sharps container. If the person's breathing stops, perform CPR without delay. It may take about one to five minutes for breathing to return to normal. Naloxone lasts for about 20 to 90 minutes. A second dose may be given between three to five minutes. The person may become aggressive or may vomit or have diarrhea. Be aware of the hazards and risks associated with needle stick injury. Something else that's very important to note here is right now we are currently in the global pandemic as we know as COVID. Extra precautions need to be taken when we're performing patient care for these type of emergencies. So specifically, if you are performing upfront compressions on a patient, it is suggested that you put a, one, a surgical mask on your patient to prevent any of their droplets being expelled into the atmosphere that you are. Also, your personal PPE is important. In addition, when using a bag valve mask, having a filter on it is essential. And the other important tactic when you are ventilating or performing CPR, is the BVM face piece remains on the patient's face at all time. This way, during compressions, the air being pushed out of their lungs is being captured in the BVM and in the filter, not going into the atmosphere. The only time the BVM should be coming off is during the analyze or shock phase when you're using an AAPP. BLS plus airway management plus O2 therapy plus naloxone administration equals AOPR, advanced overdose prevention, resuscitation.